Presenting the second bout in men's 56 kilogram bantam weight. The judges are Vietnam, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Sri Lanka. Vamos à segunda luta da categoria peso galo masculino até 56 quilos. Os juízes são representantes do Vietnã, Brasil, Argentina, Colômbia e Sri Lanka. The referee from Cuba. O árbitro é representante de Cuba, senhor José Del Cuetro Trueba. Please welcome the boxer in the red corner, representing Ukraine. Por favor, recebam o pugilista que ficará no canto vermelho, representante da Ucrânia, Nikola Butsenko. Main in the 56 kilogram bantamweight division, and here is a 25-year-old Nikola Butsenko of Ukraine. And here's his fellow Olympic debutant from Morocco. Mohamed Hamou, 22 years of age, part of an eight-strong Moroccan boxing team. And this promises to be quite an exciting contest between two very skillful, experienced operators in the realm of Aiba open boxing. In the first preliminary round is being contested between boxers from Ukraine and Morocco. The man in blue onto the front foot offering out of the orthodox stance is Mohamed Hamou, 22 years of age, ranked number 17 in the world. The reigning African Continental Championships gold medalist at 56 kilograms. And his opponent, wearing red, operating out of the southpaw stance, is Mikola Butsenko, 25 years of age, ranked number 46 in the world. He's part of a five-strong Ukrainian boxing team made up of four men and one woman. Butsenko is a boxer we've seen many times before, and in his efforts to try and qualify from the European qualification event in Samsung, Turkey, my goodness, he went after Great Britain's Kaj Asfak with a vengeance through the kitchen sink. Really rough house tactics employed to try and unsettle the British boxer. Didn't get it right there, but went on to qualify by the global qualification event in Baku, Azerbaijan. Not a bad boxer, Butsenko, South four. Extremely fit, as you've said, Ron. We've seen him many times in tournaments. This Ukraine boxer, he can box at a very high pace and high work rate throughout the whole of the contest. So he's a fit kid. But Hamou from Morocco here, he's got the height and he's got the reach um, on his opponent. He's just, he's falling. He's not so accurate with that right hand, should I say. He's not falling short with it, but inaccuracy is probably the word to use at the moment for Hamou. So he's got to improve that, 
accuracy with the right hand. He's got the height and reach, got to measure the shot behind that jab and then just send it out there. It was there, look, that sharp, nice right hand from Hamu. If he can bring that into play and use that reach, then, yeah, it could it could be a difficult contest for Butsenko. Butsenko, European Championship silver medalist from the edition in Minsk back in 2013. And that same year, he came away with a World Championship bronze from the event in Almaty, Kazakhstan. So that gives you an idea of this man's ability. He just took a big southpaw left there around the corner from Hamu. So incredibly experienced, the man in red, capable of boxing in different ways. Being the shorter man, Butsenko, he should probably be working a little bit better on the inside. He can box, as you said, Ronald, on the back foot, but he can go forward as well. But look at Hamu now. He's going for it. Wants to put in a good last 10 seconds. He certainly put in an aggressive 10 seconds, got onto the front foot and let a burst of punches go. So how will the judges score that opener? This man principally on the front foot throughout the opening three minutes. Will it be a tactic in the next round, the last 10 seconds or so? Because certainly as soon as he heard the 10-second clapper, then he went on the offensive, Hamu. Really went for it. For it. That shot there, a bit inaccurate. He said his accuracy is suspect in this opening round. But Senko there lands a lovely, clean right jab. There's the Moroccans in the crowd. Let's have a look at the scores now. It's split. That, that last bit of burst, you know, might just have been enough for Hamu. So, again, a good tactic. Judges A and C favouring the Moroccan boxer. Round two. So into the second round, then. But Senko up on his toes, but then standing his ground. And look at this for an exchange to begin round number two. Senko appeared to be keen on making a statement there, as if to say to the man, well, you're going to come through, you're going to have to deal with my fast, accurate punching. Stood his ground right near his own corner on the far side of the ring from our commentary position and peppered his man with three or four straight shots. Great response, wasn't it, from Butsenko? Met fire with fire. Hamu, you see, as he's coming forward, he's got that height and reach, but he's throwing everything into that backhand. And like I said before, if the accuracy is not there and he misses the target, then he's leaning forward. So that's making things easier for Butsenko. Walks on to two lovely shots there from the Ukraine boxer. Lovely stuff. Beautiful punch picking to begin this second round by Butsenko. Remember the opening round was split. Judge B favouring the work of the man in red. Hamu now perhaps just a little bit more circumspect about those forward forays because he's been picked off repeatedly just like that. Good work on the ropes. Nice evasive manoeuvres by Butsenko. The Moroccan here, Hamu, is not using his height and reach the way he should. He's not using it to his advantage. He keeps going forward with aggression, but he's walking on to shots. He's forcing the contest, but like I said, he keeps missing the target and then he falls in. That allows Butsenko to come back, but he's strong. This Moroccan is a strong kid. Landed a good left hand just a few moments ago. Did Hamu. There's another lead. His feet got tangled up there. It was a lead left hand from Hamu. Legs getting tangled, causing Butsenko to take a trip to the canvas. Heads coming together. Clever little boxer, you know, but Senko, you watch him with his feet. He keeps fainting with the feet. That's to draw the lead of his opponent in his in and out. Lovely stuff. A little shuffle with his feet. Oh, oh my goodness. Warning. Where did that come from? Wow. A warning issued against Mikola Butsenko. And so, well, it's going to be a point off his total. And he was boxing brilliantly. If he's done enough to win this round then it will be a 9-9 nine, nine round. But let's see how the judges score round number two here, where Butsenko responded brilliantly, picking off the advancing Moroccan. 
but he's been given a warning. That was unfortunate, wasn't it? And, well, well, I won't say unfair, because the referee may have seen something that we did in there that was deliberate, but straight away he's given a warning. So that could well change the complexion of this contest. Remember, the first round was split. Judge B favoring the work of this man. So if he can make it a 9-9 round, there'll be mo no further advantage gained. But it's most certainly a point off his total. I think he was winning the round up to that point, but Senko, so it may prove to be a 9-9 round. But obviously that's got to go across the board. It could be split. Indeed, yeah. So, but he was doing well up to then. I thought he was boxing very well. He was catching his opponent coming in. A couple of shots there, look, as Hamu is coming forward. Met fire with fire at the start of the round to set his stall out. Let's have a look here now. Seconds out. So Hamu oh. taking it across the board, 10-9, and take a point away. That's, a That's why Butsenko makes it. He's in deep trouble now. He's trailing by three points for judges A and C, and by two points for judge B, having taken the opening round. But a 10-8 round across the board in favour of the man in blue. But Senko has got a mountain to climb. Well, he needs a stoppage, doesn't he? He's not going to... Because even a 10-8... If he gets a 10-8 across the board this still round... Still trailing. He's still, he's still behind, so he needs... And we haven't seen that here yet. Yeah, we've seen 10-8. That would be the, probably the first round that we've seen that would go to a 10-7. We haven't seen that yet. So he needs a stoppage here, uh, Butsenko. Can he find a punch to produce the finish, Butsenko? That warning has proved to be costly. I mean, from my vantage point, I was fourth. I think he's unfortunate not to have won the round. Because he boxed brilliantly, standing his ground, picking off the incoming man in blue. But the referee having a stern talking to with him again. Good south poor left from Butsenko. But he's got to put his man on the floor. I think he's... He's talking about the oh lovely that's excellent boxing there from Butsenko getting your timing right hitting your opponent as he comes forward accuracy lovely boxing and that's the type of boxing we saw during the course of round number two but the ref the judges clearly fer preferring the front footwork of Hamu and that is why he conceded a 10-8 round across the board in round number two Butsenko Picking his man off once again. I'm still a bit puzzled why he warned him. Was it the use of the forearm? It, he did something we, we didn't really see, Ron, maybe. But the referee took the point off straight away, so it must have been pretty bad. Because normally they give you a caution, don't they? But here he just went... See, he... Oh, I don't know, this referee... Has he got it in for him? I don't know, but... Uh, just a bit surprised there with the referee. But he may have seen something that we missed. Hamu now, well, he knows he doesn't need to engage. And that is why the he's not on the front foot as incessantly as he was throughout rounds one and two. Can take a breather every now and again. Because short of walking on to a knockout punch, he's through to the second round, the second preliminary round of the Bantamweight tournament. But Senko still picking off his man effectively. My goodness, he's got to, get, got to get himself out of a hole here. There's that little shuffle with the feet again. Just wants his opponents to come forward. I think Butsenko's boxed a lovely round here, you know, on that back foot. His timing and accuracy has been superb here. He will have won this last round, surely. But it's not going to be enough. And that warning has cost him... Re it's cost him the contest, I would say. Most certainly. But remember, he would have lost it 10-9 across the board anyway. Yeah, that's true. But, Ronald, the thing is, once you've given a warning like that, it just sway the judges anyway, doesn't it? To be quite honest. Or it could do. I think that warning has cost him, cost him the contest. But here in this last round, Butsenko boxed superbly well on the back foot. Hamu, very strong coming forward, but he walked onto too many of those type of shots. That left hand, they'll be pleased. But Senko, having his wraps inspected by the referee from our vantage point, he looked as though he was trying to engage in a little bit of a conversation. 
nothing coming back in terms of dialogue from the third man in the ring. Let's get the official announcement. We should see Hamu progress through to the second preliminary round. But who would have taken round number three where Butsenko boxed brilliantly on the back foot, as he did in round number two, for my money. But he still conceded it 10-9, and then that point off made it a 10-8 round, putting Hamu in an insurmountable position, bar a knockout. So, Hamu through to the second preliminary round of the men's 56 kilogram bantamweight tournament. A unanimous points decision winner over Mikola Butsenko. The 2013 European Championship silver medalist, the World Championship bronze medalist from the same year, eliminated in the first preliminary round. And that warning in the second round, so significant in the scoring of this bout. 30-26, you see the one of the scores you should see. Oh, that's harsh, isn't it? 29-27, 28-28, Judge B. 